Hello friends and welcome to another episode of filming at a different location each time. So, um, this video has been requested by a few. Um, and as you can see from the title, it's going to be a HKUC haul comparison video. Um, yeah, because of the current circumstances, um, I can't film any of the hauls because, um, quarantine. But, um, I can say that I've been to all the halls except for the Jockey Club hall or hall 11 as we like to call it so i will talk about my personal experiences um on how i feel like the halls are as someone who's lived in the worst hall on hkust and has been to every single hall except for jockey club hall let me be your judge <laughs> as an incoming freshman um there were a lot of things i didn't know about haul and how it worked. So today I will talk about it and um, just try to make this video as educational as possible. All students are guaranteed one semester of haul and that's usually in their first year. You would either choose a fall semester or spring semester and depending on where you live, if you live further away then you might be guaranteed a year. For international students uh, or students that don't have a home base in Hong Kong, um, you're usually guaranteed two years of hall space. Um, if you're not a freshman and you are no longer guaranteed hall space, you can enter into a lottery. And so depending on how far away you live, like how many minutes it takes if you take public transportation, then you'll get that many tickets. And yeah, it's just like a lottery system. Hope for the best. <laughs> uh, for most of the hall layouts, they are really similar. Pretty much exactly the same. So uh, I'll be showing some photos uh, while I'm talking about the halls. Um, and for some halls, I won't show photos because you probably know exactly what they look like anyways. So the next thing I'll talk about is what is and is not provided in hall. Um, just to clear some confusion because they don't really like specify sometimes. So um, everything that's provided in the room for almost all the halls, um, there's a mattress, there is a table, there is a chair per person, a bookshelf, a closet space, mini fridge, an outlet port, and usually they'll have like a very small mirror somewhere in the room. Um, they also have a fan and you'll have an aircon. However, um, you have to pay for the aircon so it is an, a dollar an hour and most of the time you would share it with your roommate. You pay using your student ID card. Um, and there's also a trash can and you would have to throw out your own trash so you would just take your bag and there's usually a larger trash can outside in the hall and you just throw it in there. Things that are not provided in the rooms are like bed sheets, pillows, or food, or like wires. So yeah, make sure to remember to bring your own. So all of the halls, they would have uh, a common room per floor. And in halls where you have to share toilets with the whole floor, but there'd be like one or two toilets per floor. And in those cases, um, the genders are separated by floor. So, uh, for example, when I lived in Hall 5, um, I was on the second floor and the whole floor was uh, girls. And we would all share two toilets, which is six shower stalls and six toilet stalls for the whole floor. Um, and usually in that case, there's also a password for female toilets. Please remember what your password is or else sometimes it's late at night and there's no one there and you really need to go pee but you don't remember the password and it kind of sucks. Um, don't do that. So the things provided in the common rooms are a microwave, a large fridge, um, tables and chairs to chill in, um, a TV, a sink, a phone, a telephone, 
and uh, usually there's also a printer on the ground floor for you to print things um, and there's also a water source it's like it, it's either gonna be a water fountain which has cold and hot water or a kettle so you can boil water even though there is at least one large fridge and one microwave in some halls they have more um, I've never really seen people use them like put things in the fridge because it's difficult to like track most people would just keep it in their own mini fridge um, unless they are 100% certain that no one is ever gonna want to touch their food or drink um, so yeah um, in the halls they they don't have any cooking facilities so they don't have a stove or um, a hot plate or things like that so it's not like dangerous but if you so desire, you can bring your own rice cooker and your own hot plate and just plug it into the wall and your own pots and utensils and you can be able to cook. Um, I've seen people do that. I've seen people make their own hot pots in hall or um, cook their own rice and eat together with friends in the common room. Um, halls also have a laundry room uh, which include multiple washers and dryers. The number is determined by which hall you live in. You have to pay for the washing and drying, of course, by your student ID card as well. So, um, and you have to make sure that you go and collect your clothes when the time is up because usually there will be quite a line. There have been cases where when your time is up and you haven't come and collected, people would just take out your clothes and put it on the table or the floor or they would steal your clothes. Um, so yeah, you have to be careful about that. Um, and also, um, in a shared toilet situation, which is not applicable to Hall 7 to Hall 9, um, but other halls have a shared toilet situation. I lived in Hall 5, which had the least amount of shower stalls, three per toilet. Um, as a person who usually showers at night, I actually opted for showering in the morning instead when I lived at Hall, um, because in the morning, there, there isn't a line. To wait for the shower yeah so I don't need to fight with other people to decide who was showering first so let's start with hall 1 um, hall 1 can accommodate around 500 plus students so it is quite a big hall um, and there is an entrance um, on the ground floor and also the top floor this hall is the most convenient because it is the closest to the lecture halls and the classrooms and the restaurants. It's just the closest to the main building. To walk all the way up to the atrium, it takes less than five minutes. It really does. It takes less than five minutes. So if you are a person who is always scared of being late to class, um, I feel like hall one would be a good choice. Um, so you don't have to wake up too early. However, it is one of the older halls, so um, it's kind of run down. Uh, it's not exactly like very new condition, but the rooms are relatively big. There are many locals who choose to live in Hall 1. Um, most people who live in Hall 1 are locals. Um, there are not a lot of international students who live in Hall 1. And in Hall 1, there are only double beds, so that means you would only have one roommate and you share the toilet with the whole floor. Um, they also have like a foosball table. Foosball? Is that what you call it? Like those little football, small football men table on the ground floor, so if you are bored, you can play. So Hall 2, um, it is also quite an old hall. Uh, it's one of the first ones. So Hall 2, it is also quite an old hall. It's one of the first ones. Um, and it can accommodate around 400 plus students. So there are also two entrances again. And the main one is on the top floor. It is also like relatively close to the main building and where you eat. It's also a little run down, but then they have a nice view. And I quite like their view actually. It is very pretty. Most halls have a really nice view. It's also mostly locals who live there um, and they also have some triple rooms. Triple rooms is when you would have two other roommates and one side is a bunk bed and the other side is a bunk bed without the bottom bed. I'll show you a photo of it. <laughs> 
I've had some seniors complain about um, Hall 1 and Hall 2 being really, really noisy. Like the reason why I personally didn't choose Hall 1 and Hall 2 to live in, it's because um, I, I tend to like quieter places if I am going to sleep. I've heard that they would like frequently knock at your door and ask you to like go to car room and play with them and it's pretty noisy because um, a lot of people like to play games in like the common room or just in their room with their door wide open and sometimes it's difficult if you want to study or if you want to sleep um, so yeah that is one thing that you should be wary of I know it doesn't happen on all the floors or like every single semester but it is common enough that it's kind of like a thing that people just know about. <laughs> now on to Hall 3. Um, it can accommodate 450 plus students. Um, it is also a little old, but it is a very clean hall. It is further away from the main campus. It's not in chronological order, as I said. It's, it's in a weird place, but um, I think that's okay. It's, it's still a big hall. Um, and they also have some double and triple rooms as well. Um, and you also have to share a toilet with the whole floor. And I think if you want to live in Hall 3, it'd be bet it's good because it's like relatively further away. It's more calm and quiet. On to Hall 4. Um, hall 4 is a very big hall. Um, it can accommodate 450 plus students, um, but their rooms are a lot bigger than the normal size room. It's just a lot wider in my opinion. Um, yeah, it is a very large hall and it's the easiest one to sneak into. Mainly because there's a even mix of locals, international and exchange students who live in Hall 4. And yeah, there's actually a lot of international and exchange students who live in Hall 4. And it is uh, one of the original halls so it is a quite a bit run down. But yeah, it's actually really easy. I've sneaked into Hall 4 many many times by just following my friends. Yeah, if you like to sneak in your friends to be with you then that hall four might be a good idea um, i'm not i'm not saying that you should but like i'm just saying uh however hall four is quite noisy at night uh, i've slept over at hall four a few times it's so noisy like people are always like there's always some party or people are like gathering together and they're like laughing a lot I mean, it's so easy to sneak in people at Hall 4, so like, people will want to be with their friends all the time. Understandable. And also, uh, the stairwells, they and sometimes the corridors, there is just a really strong smell of either cigarettes or weed. Um, so if you're sensitive to that, uh, I feel like Hall 4 might not be a great idea for you. So for Hall 4, you also have to share the washroom, again, with the whole floor. So it is separated by male and female, but I am not surprised when, like, there are both genders on the same floor. Honestly, just mind your own business and just don't care about what other people are doing as long as they're not being too noisy. Like, that's just how university life is. <laughs> so hall five is the hall I lived in. And um, they are not joking when they say hall five is the worst hall. It can accommodate around like 400 plus students. And despite what you think, it is actually not next to Hall 4. Hall 5 is actually right next to Hall 1. Um, it used to be a postgraduate hall, but they changed it now for undergraduates and it didn't bother to refurbish it. And so, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's layout for Hall 5 is a little bit different from compared to other halls. Um, even though all the rooms are double rooms, um, all the rooms are also bunk beds. So, I mean, me personally, I'm okay with bunk beds because I don't like it when I can see my roommate sleep. I just find it really weird. Um, <laughs> but then also the rooms are a lot smaller, um, hence why there's bunk bed. And it is the most rundown and the dirtiest hall um, that I know of. 
I've heard stories of people who live on the ground floor saying that there are like a lot of cockroaches um, and no matter what they do there will always be insects and like little crawlies coming in um, I'm just lucky I live on the second floor the worst that we got was this extremely large moth that was the size of my face that flew into our room and me and my roommate were trying to get it out but it wouldn't go back out of the window because the windows are very small I actually don't even know how it got in in the first place now, Most of the people who live in Hall 5 are locals 80% are locals and the other 20% are just international school students uh, like me uh, There are quite a few redeeming things about Hall 5 though um, is that one, it is relatively quiet they don't really do much except for sell snacks and play mahjong and the ground floor common room so it really isn't noisy at all there is very quiet which I adore, I love I can study and sleep without having to be woken up by loud people which is great um, there's also uh, one sink in the hall which is different to all the other halls that I've previously mentioned so sometimes if you don't want to like go to the toilet you can just brush your teeth in your own room which is great cool you know so next hall is hall 6 and it can accommodate around 550 students so that is a very 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 big hall um, there's also a mix of local international students who live in Hall 6. Um, hall 6 is also one of the newer halls. It was built more recently and they have large rooms and it's a clean building. It's not that run down. It's, it's actually, yeah, it's quite clean. And, and they have a mix of double and triple rooms. So they actually have a quite nice view and it's right next to the seafront. And by seafront, we don't mean seaside. Seafront is actually a restaurant thing that's open um, in the afternoon until the AMs. And it's mainly for students to eat or drink in. It can get quite noisy um, at the seafront um, because that's where people like to get drunk at like 2 AM. So that is one of the issues. But other than that, it is actually quite a nice haul. Um, you also have to share a toilet with the whole floor. Yeah, Hall 6 is a solid place to be. <laughs> Next is Hall 7. So it can accommodate um, 300 plus students. Um, there's a mix of locals, internationals, and exchange students at Hall 7 as well. And they have... It's the basic large room and it's a clean and newer building. The only difference between Hall 7 and Hall 6 is that Hall 7 only has double rooms. So you wouldn't have to be scared of like sharing it with like a second roommate as well. Which can be a little bit annoying based on my friend's experiences. Um, and also in Hall 7 you have your own toilet. By your own toilet I mean you have to share it with like four other people. So yeah, that's the difference between all the other halls and Hall 7, 8, 9. Now moving on to Hall 8 and Hall 9. Um, I'm grouping these together because they are literally exactly the same. They're right next to each other and yeah. So the defining feature of Hall 8 and Hall 9 is that they have the best view. It is literally right next to the sea. If you are facing the ocean, then you'll be able to see the sunrise every morning which I find to be beautiful and together they can accommodate around 650 plus students in total and it's mostly for international and exchange students like it is aimed for them it, it is the newest buildings and they are also more expensive um, and they don't have triple rooms they only have double rooms which is good. So in hall 8 and 9, as I said, you have your own toilet and there's also a sink in the room. And one thing good about hall 8 and hall 9 is that there is a gym right next to hall 9. It's just called hall 9 gym. And um, it's good. It's a quite small gym, but then it's very close. So if you like, like to work out and things like that. I think living in hall 8 or hall 9 or even in hall 4, because hall 4 is actually right next to hall 8 and hall 9. Um, I know, it's weird. So if you like going to the gym, you can do that. And also one thing you have to remember is that you have to clean your own room. Um, no one's going to come in and clean your room for you. Um, they can't be bothered. Uh, so please remember to clean your own room, bring cleaning products, 
stay hygienic, please. Um, yeah, people don't, you don't want to come back to a room which is absolute trash and dirty. So, please, don't be mank. Like, money aside, seven, eight, nine are the best hauls. And they're also the most expensive. Um, but yeah, seven, eight, nine. And then hall six. And then hall one, two, three, four. And then hall five. Hall five is the worst hall. Worst hall. Worst. Absolute worst. Don't. Uh uh. No. Don't. Mm mm. Don't. Don't. If. Mm hmm. How. So if you're a first year and you're guaranteed um, hall space, you get to choose their top three choices of which hall you want to be in. The thing is, I didn't choose hall five. I chose six, seven, eight. And they just gave me hall five because apparently everything else was fall. Very sad. So if you don't mind money or where you live and stuff like that, um, I feel like hall five is, I think hall five is the one of the cheapest options. The only thing cheaper are triple rooms. However, there's a problem of having to deal with like two other people and it's really difficult to get a good roommate, let alone two good roommates. Thing is, you can't really choose if you want to be in a double or triple room. Um, you have to choose based on halls. If you don't want to be in a triple room, don't choose halls that have triple rooms. So that is it for the video. Um, I hope you guys have learned something and have enjoyed. If you guys have any questions, please, please, please comment down below or DM me and you can ask me any question you want. Um, regarding this video or the hauls or my experiences I will gladly help you you can also comment down below which one is your favorite haul and um, I may or may not judge you so if you vibe well with this video please like this video and if you vibe well with me then please consider subscribing because one subscriber equals to one moth that will not fly into my room at night i think that is it for the video um thank you guys so much for watching this video i think i'll be making an hkust series because um it's my university and i feel like people don't talk about it enough so yeah hopefully this was helpful to you um i didn't spend a lot of time researching but this is all from personal experience. I haven't lived in every single hall, of course, so I cannot tell you exactly how everything goes there. These are just my experiences, and so hopefully this is all very, very useful to you. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Chloe Bro Bro, or that's really the only social media I have. Um, so yeah, um, thank you again. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!